This lesson will show how to evaluate trig ratios for any angle between 0 and 360 degrees. And in this first example, we're going to consider the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25. So this circle has a radius of 5. We see that uh, a is the point here, 5, 0. And so we have a point located on the circle, the point 4, 3. Now, in the uh, diagram here, the radius is 5. And if you look at the diagram, since P is the point 4, 3, that means that this side would be 4. And since the Y coordinate is 3, the uh, dotted line here would be 3 units. And that's how another way that you can get that the radius is 5, because by Pythagoras' theorem, 3 squared plus 4 squared would equal 5 squared. So the, the uh, hypotenuse is 5. And of course, also, this is a circle with a radius of 5. Remember, x squared plus y squared equals uh, the radius squared is a circle with a center at the origin. And that number right there is the radius squared. Now we're asked to write the primary trig ratios, the sine, cos, and tan for the angle illustrated. Remember, the sine ratio is the ratio of the opposite side of the hypotenuse. So 3 over 5 is the sine of angle theta. The cosine is the adjacent side, the 4 over 5. So cos theta is 4 over 5. And the tan of the angle is 3 over 4. So the tan of theta is 3 quarters. Now, to determine the angle, since we know the sine, cos, and tan of uh, the angle, we could use any trig ratio. It really wouldn't matter which. I am going to use the sine here. And so we would take the 3 over 5 and uh, change that to a decimal. So we get sine theta equals 0 0.6. Now to find the angle theta, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And then you would take the inverse sine. So theta is the inverse sine. Remember, this is the uh, function, what it looks like here, of 0 0.6, which tells us that that angle should be about 37 degrees. Flipping over to the second page, we're asked to consider uh, another circle, uh, same circle actually, but with the point, instead of uh, the point uh, 4, 3 over here, it's negative 4, 3. So I've actually reflected that point in the y-axis and it's straight over here. Now, the radius is still 5 units. And we could find again the radius if we wanted to. Now, this side right here on the diagram would be 4 units. And actually, we would think of that as negative 4, because you actually go 4 to the left from the origin, and then up 3. And of course, if I want to find the distance r, the hypotenuse, I don't really need to uh, use negative 4 here, because uh, negative 4 squared is the same as 4 squared. So I could use Pythagoras' theorem again to find my hypotenuse. But of course, it's still the radius, so it should still be 5. So r squared equals 25, so the radius is 5. So for now, the angle we're talking about here is still the angle theta for that angle right there. Now for that angle, we're actually looking at this triangle. And so this would be the opposite side. The negative 4 would be the adjacent side. And the uh, r, of course, is still 5. So if I want to write out the sign for that. The sine would be 3 over 5. So that's the sine of the angle. Now the cosine would be negative 4 over 5. The adjacent side is actually negative because we are in the second quadrant. The uh, opposite side here was still positive because uh, that 3 is, uh, that y value is positive. This is a 3 up, so that's still positive. So notice that the cosine in the second quadrant here is negative because adjacent over hypotenuse, the adjacent in the second quadrant would always be a negative value. And then the tan of the angle would be 3 divided by negative 4, which we would simplify to negative 3 quarters. So notice that the tan is also negative because the opposite side would always be positive, but the adjacent side would always be negative in the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, sine's positive, but cos and tan are both negative. Now, if we're going to determine the angle theta, in this little triangle, I could determine the angle beta first. Beta is this angle right here that the uh, hypotenuse makes with the uh, negative x-axis. And so I could use sine theta equals 3 fifths. 
Uh, again, change the three-fifths to a decimal and take the inverse sign. And we get 37 degrees. Now that's this angle beta. If I want to find angle theta, angle theta plus angle beta would together make a straight angle, 180 degrees. So I could use that to find angle beta. Sorry, angle theta. Now, since negative 4, 3 isn't a second quadrant, we know that angle must be obtuse. This angle is uh, bigger than 90 degrees. So in order to find the angle, we would go 180 minus the beta, which is the 37. And so angle theta is 143 degrees. So that's that angle right there. It's over in the second quadrant. Now, if we had used the cosine to find that angle in the second quadrant, it actually would have told us directly it was 143 degrees. It wouldn't have first told it was 37 because the, uh, since the, calc since the uh, cosine is negative over here in the second quadrant, uh, that would actually return us with the correct angle right away. And what that would look like in your calculator, if we stop the presentation for a moment, if I open up my graphing calculator, And we'll make sure it's in degree mode, it is. So I'm using this cosine. Cosine is negative 4 fifths. Now, so negative 4 fifths is uh, 0 point, negative 0 0.8. So if I take the inverse cos of negative 0.8, the calculator does tell me right away that it's 143 degrees. So if you're in the second quadrant, uh, to find an angle, the best uh, trig ratio to use is the cosine. The sine, if you know the sine of the angle, what you have to do is uh, use the sine function and then subtract from 180 degrees. So angle theta does work out to be 143 degrees.